Hello, welcome back to J300. We're going to talk today about a short lesson on how to use space and probably more importantly, uh, the middle of the lecture is going to talk about how not to use space. So the uh, example we're going to take on today is kind of an unfortunate example from a local politician here in the Kansas City area. It's a little bit dated. It's from about five years ago, but I received this in the mail about five years ago and I thought to myself, Wow, this is a really, really congested use of space, right? So let's assume for a moment here that we are in charge of being uh, Laura McConwell's graphic designer. She brings this to us and says, I think I got it. I think I've got the mailer that I'd like to send out to um, everybody. And you say, well, I think I've got some ideas. I think I've got some ways to improve it. Now, this again would be a really, really great uh, exam question, right? How would you improve what's in front of you here? Use a paragraph to describe uh, how this would go, right? And um, if you had a paragraph to describe it, think about what you would say about this. What are some things that we would say based on what we've said already in this class, right? What would you do in terms of typography with this? What would you do in terms of um, hierarchy with this? How would you um, make sure that you signal to the reader what is most important important and what is second most important and so on with this. Um, how would you execute that idea? And um, I think that would be a really good list of things that you could make, uh, you know, almost as a study guide that, that would help you figure out how you would attack um, the question on the exam. So think about that. And then the second question that you could take on for this would be the idea of how could you use space? Now that's what the topic of this lecture is. So hopefully by the end of this lecture, we'll have some ideas on how to better use space on this card. Cause I think it could use some improvement regardless of what we think about Laura and her politics and all of her extensive, extensive um, experience and uh, resume here, right? So um, let's keep going. So what do we mean when we talk about this idea of using space? What can we take on from that? So the theoretical thing that we'll start with here is that space is not empty, but it has meaning, right? Um, and that's a little bit uh, philosophical, if you will, right? Space is not empty. But um, basically what that is to say is that space has meaning. And when you leave, um, you know, an area of your document open, it's not just sitting there, it's actually active while it's being empty, right? So um, any time that we also put a form onto the page, we're actually trying, we're actually establishing the shape of that white space, right? So um, if we were just to look at a blank slide, a blank slide actually doesn't have um, negative space to it because there's no positive space on it. So positive space, positive form creates negative space. So as an example of that, consider this, right? This uh, simple line in the middle of this page, um, it creates the illusion of space around it. If it was just a completely blank space, screen, then it would just all be space. But now that we have a form on it, that form divides the page vertically, right? It, it divides the page this way. It also, if it were to move, it would define the page in a totally different way. So if that small segment of a line goes ahead and moves here, well then it's going to go ahead and divide the page in a totally different way. Not only is it going to divide the page different in its vertical lines there, but it's also going to go ahead and create these strong horizontal lines across the page. And that's something that we should understand about any form is that it's going to start dividing the negative space on the page in different ways, right? If we go ahead and widen that line, that segment of a line, then it's going to create different um, assumptions about what the space around it is defined as because it's going to um, create these invisible lines. Now, to be clear, I should have said this at the beginning, these small red lines that are sitting on the page, they're not actually red lines, but they're lines that as viewers, we are willing to create by looking at those uh, that the initial form and extending that form through 
the negative space on the page. If we go ahead and have more than one form on the page, then those forms each start creating um, illusions of negative space around them as well. So now it's getting a little bit more complicated, right? Now we have lines that are extending from the outside of each of those and um, they create negative space off of them as well. If we start tilting things, well then things get really complicated, right? Now we're starting to work with um, slanted lines and slanted ideas about what negative space looks like on the page. And that's just done by adding one little tilt. We go from a pretty standard, pretty linear, pretty rectangular, uh, pretty straight idea of negative space. And then we go ahead and really start throwing it off kilter. So that's something to keep in mind when we're designing our documents and something to keep in mind when you're designing your resume, right? So that's the broad consideration of what um, space is like. Here's a thing that we as page designers almost always try not to do. And many of you have heard this idea before. It's the idea of trapped white space, right? When you take things on a page and you almost encase some white space in the middle of the page by having things surrounding that white space, well that creates the idea of trapped white space. We know from earlier in the semester when we talked about what draws our eye to certain things on the page that brightness draws our eye and contrast draws our eye. Whenever you have trapped white space, you've created both of those things. You've created space on the page that attracts our eye because of its brightness and space on the page that attracts our eye because of contrast. Now, why is that a thing that we don't want to do? Well, generally, that space that's in the middle of the page is not particularly important. It's not something that we want to draw the reader's eye to. So the second thing that I would ask you to put in your notes here is the reason we don't want to do this is because we don't want to draw their eye to something that is uh, absent, right? Something that doesn't have any meaning. Instead, we want to draw them to the dominant photo. We want to draw them to the headline. We want to draw them to the wonderful illustration that we've created, not the trapped white space in the middle of the page. So here's an example of a page. This page has um, these black rectangles on it that are signifying um, photographs. We obviously can see the subheadings, we can see the headline, we can see body copy, we can see all kinds of stuff operating on this page. And we should be able to pretty easily, based on our definition of what a trapped white space is, we should be able to find it. It's this stretch of space right here in the middle of the spread that's being surrounded by this object and this object and this object all the way around it, there's no way for this trapped white space to get out. So this trapped white space right here in the middle is particularly problematic. Now, I uh, created this spread with the idea of really trapping this white space. Usually trapped white space isn't quite so flagrant in what it's trying to do here, but this is some pretty egregious white space that's trying to trap itself right in the middle of the page, right? So. Um, what does trap white space look like in a more subtle form? Well, we can look at this idea of um, you know, the trapped white space here in the middle of this. This logo design has some trapped white space in this triangle right in the middle. Now this one over here has decided, you know what, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this trapped white space and we're going to fill it in like that. That's a little bit less awkward in the way that it's put together. And then this one over here is fully resolved as a design book would say because not only does it avoid the trapped white space in the middle, but look at the edges. The edges are still staying triangular, right? And so this both avoids um, having trapped white space on the inside and it um, creates a really strong idea of what the outside of this shape should look like too. Here's a bad example of trapped white space. The headline at the top, the photo on the side, the photo at the bottom, the um, subhead over on this side and another photo over on this side, it has trapped in the middle that white space. I think you can tell from your the way that your eye operates that our eye is just so drawn to that negative space in the middle. At least my eye is drawn there for sure. 
This is a more typical thing that will happen because it's a more typical document that um, you are laying out here, but we've got three legs of type of body copy. We have the um, cut out background photograph on the left, and then we have this screen with a stroke around it that's serving as kind of this alternative coverage that's sitting off to the side here. So what does the trapped white space look like? Well, it looks like this idea right here. Now you might say, well, there's a, there's a way for that trapped white space to get out, right? It could go ahead and go over here and take a turn downwards and then we're out of there. Well, that, that's one of the um, ideas of trapped white space to get in your notes from this slide is anytime that the, you've got to get out of the white space with a turn, then we consider that trapped. So this right here is encircled on three sides, if not three and a half sides. And so if it's going to be that trapped in, we would call that trapped white space to get out of there. How would you correct this? How would you change this spread to make sure that this trapped white space isn't a problem? I think you should be able to, in your notes, note at least three different ways that you could go ahead and, and fix this. So troubleshoot this. I'll give you a second here. How would you fix this trapped white space? The trapped white space to me has a lot of different solutions, right? The one that we're gonna show here is the idea that we could go ahead and drop this text down and wrap it around this cutout background right here. And when you wrap it around, then that trapped white space disappears. Don't mistake this right here, this space right here for being trapped white space. If we were to give this a name from what our vocabulary was last week, then we would call this an internal margin, right? This is the amount of space in between our text and our graphic. So it's an internal margin and that's comfortably done there. What else could we do with this? Well, I can envision a situation where I go ahead and make this alternative coverage down here, this screen, I make it the same width as this column right here. And if I did that, then I could go ahead and drop that text around these coins again, and I avoid the trapped white space as well. I could go ahead and narrow it down to one column, this alternative coverage down here. And if I did that, then I could go ahead and shimmy these um, coins over here and they would fill that space. There would be a bunch of space over here on the edge of the page, but that's okay. That's where we want our trapped, any sort of white space to be is not trapped, but on the edge of the page here. So. Here is our, um, our uh, resolved, our completed spread here. We see that there's a ton of white space right here on this page. But look at the easy out that this page, that this white space has off the page. It easily can escape off the left hand side of the page. So another thing to add to your notes here is white space is not bad. It's not something we want to avoid, but we do want it to have an easy way off the page without having to take any turns. Generally speaking, where we want to have white space on our spreads is at the corners, right? Top left, top right bottom left and bottom right, those spaces have easy ways off of the page without interrupting what you're trying to do with your page design or the content that you're trying to put on your page. This white space is okay. This white space up at the top, totally okay. This white space at the top has an easy out, it's totally okay. This down here has an easy way out, is totally okay as well. And again, don't mistake this right here, which is an, an internal margin with trapped white space. Now, I think it's kind of an ugly trapped uh, internal margin. I think it's maybe a little bit thicker than I would choose as a page designer, but um, generally speaking, there's nothing uh, textbook wrong about that. Maybe just a little bit dated and a little bit ugly uh, in terms of our taste, right? So how do we avoid having trapped white space on our page? I'll give you these four tips. The first thing that I would say is to work from the inside out of the page. That the first thing that goes on your page should be a dominant element and it should generally go center-ish 
on your page. Not exactly centered, right? But maybe kind of in those rule of thirds intersection areas. So that's the first thing to do is put things in the center. That will help you avoid putting things um, that are to, it will avoid you having trapped white space in the center. As I said before, we wanna put the thing with the most hierarchy on the page first. If that's typography, then go ahead and put that on the page first. If that's a photograph or an illustration, put that on the page first as well. The columns and the grids are there to help you design. They're there to help you stay um, structured with your design. So if you continue to use those, generally you will avoid trapped white space as well. And then, Yes, we want white space. If we want it, we're going to go ahead and use it on the outside of our page. So earlier we had um, a design. I'm going to flip back to it really quickly. We had this design and it had a certain number of photographs and it had a certain amount of text on it. And we said that this is obviously what we don't want to do. Now let's show an alternative uh, sketch of the exact same spread but this time using the principles that we're trying to use, right? So this would be our dominant photo. It's gonna be centerish on the page, and that's what we put on the page first. That's strongly done there. It's gonna be hard for us to trap white space with that dominant photo placed there. The rest of the photos are adjacent to that dominant photo. So in your notes, this is an important principle to have in here have the next things that you put on your page be adjacent. Don't go ahead and distance them from the dominant photo. Go ahead and have them cluster around the dominant element or the dominant photo in this case. So we've already added one photo to this page. We've added it over here. It's adjacent, it's right there. It's got a nice internal margin that's separating it, but generally it's adjacent. And our body copy is also adjacent to that dominant photo. So that's strongly done as well. Our headline is gonna be adjacent to the dominant photo. Our subhead is gonna be adjacent to the headline. So you see that everything is starting to cluster around these two edges of the dominant photo here. And these guys over here are starting to go ahead and cluster around the dominant photo on this side. We won't be surprised that as we add more photos, we start to add more um, adjacent photos to the dominant. So dominant photo adjacent, 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 adjacent. Now notice this. If we go all the way back to the beginning of where we put this photo on the page, we can see that we left space at the top, right, bottom, and left-hand side of that photo. And one of the reasons that we did that is because it allowed us to put things adjacent to that dominant photo all the way around. Some people call this the pinwheel design, which is the idea that everything is revolving around one dominant photo or one dominant element, right? Some people call this the mosaic design um, idea, but regardless, it's going to allow us to avoid trapped white space, because look at that um, design here, we don't have any trapped white space. What we do have is white space on the top left that has an easy way off the page. We have um, you know, relief down here at the bottom that has an easy way off the page as well. If you go ahead and contrast that with where we started before, wow, that was incredibly, incredibly ugly. And you can see that our eye is is drawn not to the trapped white space in the middle of the page, but it's instead drawn to the content of the page, which in this case would be a cluster of five photographs. That's what we'd like to do with our designs. There are a couple of different um, design techniques that I'll show you that are creative ways of using um, white space. The first one I'm gonna call open up, and this is the idea of um, really having a, just an incredible amount of white space uh, on your page. This can be useful with resumes if you can uh, do it in kind of a classy and sophisticated way. We see that this spread here, while it has a dominant headline that's just really, really large, look at all this white space here that has an easy way off. 
easy way off the page, easy way off the page. Everything has an easy way off the page, but it allows us to focus on the things in the on the page that the designer would like us to focus on. This photo essay has tons of white space on the page, top left, top right, bottom left, over on the right hand side, but all of them have easy exits off the page as well. Something like this is just an elegant way of using typography where we um, go ahead and have um, tons and tons of white space on the top and the bottom of the page. Obviously this works very well if you don't have a lot to fit on one page. If you instead push things to the middle of the page so that the outside of the page has lots and lots of release for it. We see this a lot with photo essays. We see this a lot with um, large dominant photos that can take over an entire page. Um, just notice where the white space is here. We have bottom left, top, and then this is an aggressive use of white space right in the middle of the page, but notice that it has a complete path all the way through, and it doesn't feel trapped to me at all. Again, this is a, a similar page as part of the same package. We can have an easy way off for the white, page, white space here. And notice that everything here is revolving around the text, essentially. So it's a, it's a variation on that pinwheel design where everything is revolving, but it's revolving around the body copy here. Same deal here, lots and lots of exit um, space for the white space on the edges of the page. If there's anything trapped here, it's trapped by the lines of the illustration. Um, more text here. Another thing that uh, kind of breaks this rule of um, avoiding trapped white space is this idea of using negative space as a graphic. Some of you uh, might find this a clever approach to um, your infographic when you end up doing it, or maybe you just carry this idea um, uh, towards some project in the very far future. Um, this is a, um, a dove to um, represent peace, and the, um, the words on the inside of the dove are quotations about peace, and what do they create by um, being laid out in this way? They create um, the form of a dove. This is negative space that's being used to create form, right? So we're creating a graphic by um, using white space. Here's another example here, white space on the outside of this page. Um, it encircles all of the text to create a hot air balloon um, illustration. Same deal here, a really interesting way of using um, kind of a literal eye line, as we would call it, that takes us uh, from this illustration down here to these stars up here, and it's divided by um, this white space that's right in the middle. Notice that this white space does have an interesting kind of easy way off of the page. It's a little bit interrupted by these stars, but I think that we can uh, appreciate that creativity there. Uh, the opposite approach, right? So going from the bottom to the top and then going from the top to the bottom, this spotlight effect over here, um, you know, encircling um, all of this text with, uh, well, the white space is being encircled by the text and that creates the spotlight effect. A really interesting um, approach here. This is a much more sophisticated in how it used the tool, but it's trying to show this idea of a mountain biker, you know, approaching uh, the top of this mountain. And to do this, we go ahead and use this um, pen tool path that would interrupt all of your text and create negative white space but within the spread. So the, again, this is breaking the rule that we just talked about. It says don't use trapped white space and this is gonna intentionally trap white space in a creative way. The illusion of a clock from white space. So with all of that in mind, what would we say about Laura McConwell's design? This would be, again, a very, very fair um, test question. So what I'm gonna leave you with today is just the, the idea, take five minutes right now and write a critique of this design. This is really, really good um, 
practice for you to apply what we just talked about in terms of using space. I'll let you do that for the next five or 10 minutes. Maybe I'll give you um, kind of a recap of what I think that should, that kind of a paragraph should look like as we get closer to the exam. I hope that was helpful. I hope you apply the ideas that we talked about to your resume and your infographic. And I will talk to you next time when we talk about uh, photojournalism and what are some ideas to take away from that. Talk to you soon.